What's going on guys? Welcome to yet another mini-series based around the Slayer skill. So this is something I have not done before, but it has been requested a lot, so I figured I will take up the task and go with it. For this little series, I'm calling it Do It, Skip It, or Block It, and it is going to be based around the three more popular Slayer Masters, and I'm going to be going through which tasks you should do, which ones you should skip, and which ones you should permanently put on your block list. There's two different ways that you can approach the Slayer skill. You want a lot of XP very quickly that accompanies a lot of Slayer points, or you want to do it a little bit slower and try to make as much money as you possibly can on your way to 99. In this first episode, I'm going to be covering the Slayer Masters Neve or Steve, if you've completed Monkey Madness 2, and I'm going to be going through which tasks you should do, skip, or block if you're looking to get the most experience the fastest way out of the Slayer skill. Now it is widely known that Neve or Steve generally give tasks that are a lot better for faster experience because of the different task weights associated with tasks through this Slayer Master. There are different Slayer tasks on Neve and Steve's list that need to be unlocked by doing certain quests or paying Slayer points to unlock them as a task, but for simplicity's sake I'm going to be using the total task weight of Neve and Steve based on if you had every quest done in the game and if you had every single unlock unlocked. It will make it a lot more simple to kind of get the point across. Now Neve and Steve's task weights are a little bit more confined, meaning they don't go as high as the other Slayer Masters. Neve and Steve only give tasks that will have a weight of up to 10, while Duradel can give tasks all the way up to a weight of 12, giving you a greater percentage chance of receiving that as a task. Now on the screen now you can see Neve and Steve's total task weight, which is 236, and all of the percentages that come along with each weight. Task weight of 10 will give you a 4.24% chance of receiving that as a task. Task weight of 9, 3.81%. Task weight of 8, 3.39%, and so on and so on. Now this series is going to be based on helping you to decide which tasks you should block and which tasks you should skip. Now you might not like Iron Dragons, but you might absolutely despise Water Fiends, for example. Now the Iron Dragons have a very high task weight, while the Water Fiends have a very low task weight. So if you use 100 points to permanently block Water Fiends, you're kind of wasting your points because you're rarely going to be assigned those as a task, while Iron Dragons might be assigned pretty frequently because of their higher task weight. So here it would make sense to actually block the Iron Dragons permanently and just skip the Water Fiends if they ever do come around. But now that I've gotten all those little explanations out of the way, we can actually go ahead and jump into what tasks are assigned by Neve and Steve, which ones you should do, which ones you should skip, and which ones you should block. Now like I said earlier, this is going to be based purely on slayers that want to get the most XP as fast as they can. So let's get going. As you can see here at the top of this image, I sorted the tasks by task weight rather than by alphabetical order because I think it would be a lot easier to go through them by their specific task weight rather than just what they're called. That way we can group them up into clusters and the percentages I can put on the screen so you can see exactly what they are while I'm going through them. So fortunately with Neve or Steve, there's only one task that has a task weight of 10 and that is the Czar. And luckily it is an unlock. So if you're looking to do Slayer for a lot of fast XP, you're going to want to leave this one locked. Because Fire Capes, even at max combat, and the best gear, and the best prayers, is still going to take you quite a bit of time. Anywhere between 25 and 45 minutes, depending on your levels. So it is my suggestion to you that if you're doing this for fast XP, definitely leave this one locked. Next up is going to be the grouping of tasks with a task weight of 9. If you're assigned a task that has a task weight of 9, you will have a 3.81% chance of receiving any of these tasks every time you go to get a Slayer task. Starting off is going to be the Fire Giants. You're definitely going to want to do these in the Stronghold Slayer Cave in the Gnome Stronghold. You can set up a cannon here and knock this task out very quickly. Next up is Black Demons. Black Demons can be killed in the Chasm of Fire, where you can also set up a cannon and once again knock this task out very quickly. Abyssal Demons can be done in the Catacombs of Karend with Barrage or Burst because it is a multi-combat zone. And you will be able to have the chance to actually make some money back on this while barraging or bursting from the possible chances of Abyssal Whip Drops. Next up is going to be Bloodvelds. 
Bloodvelds can once again be killed in the Stronghold Slayer Cave in the Gnome Stronghold with a cannon. Next up is going to be Calphites. Calphites you can also use a cannon and you're probably going to want to kill the smallest ones because they die very quickly because they have low HP. The next grouping of NPCs that we are going to cover is going to have a task weight of 8. If you are assigned one of these tasks, you had a 3.39% chance of being assigned a task with a weight of 8. Starting off, we will take a look at the Dagonoths. Dagonoths can be killed very efficiently underneath of the Lighthouse, which you gain access to after the Horror from the Deep Quest. It is multi-combat down there, and you can set up a cannon. Next up is the Sukas. Sukas can also be cannoned on the Moonclan Island after the quest Lunar Diplomacy, making it a very fast task. Next up is Hellhounds, which can once again be cannoned in the Stronghold Slayer Cave in the Gnome Stronghold. And the next two tasks are both unlocks. You will unlock boss tasks and lizard men's from one of the Slayer Masters for an amount of points. Now, if you're looking for fast XP, you're probably not going to want to do bosses because they do take a long time to do the task, even if you only do a low amount of them. If you really don't want to use your points to skip, I suppose you could do three of them. But if you're looking for fast XP, I just wouldn't really bother unlocking this. Next up is lizard men. Now this is really up to you. You can cannon the smaller lizard men if you do unlock them, but you're not really gaining anything from that, so you might want to just save your points for skipping and blocking tasks. But if you do have a surplus of points, you can go ahead, unlock this, cannon the smaller lizard men, and just use your points whenever you want. The next grouping of NPCs that we're going to cover all carry a task weight of 7. You will have a 2.97% chance of being assigned these as a task. Now this is where we come to our first blocked task, and these are going to be Smoke Devils. Now this is actually only my opinion, because you can actually cannon the Smoke Devils, but they do have quite high defense, so it could take you a lot of cannonballs and a good amount of time to cannon this task. From my experience, I would just block this task altogether, because they are assigned quite frequently from Neve or Sieve. Next up we have the Greater Demons, which I suggest you absolutely do in the Chasm of Fire because you can set up a cannon down there. And next we have Necrails. Necrails you can kill in the Catacombs of Karen in a multi-combat environment with Barrage or Burst. They do drop some decent loot, which you can out to get some of your money back. Moving along, the next grouping of NPCs we will cover have a task weight of 6. You will have a 2.54% chance of being assigned any one of these tasks. First up is going to be the Dust Devils. Now the Dust Devils are a very weak NPC. They have low defense and low magic defense. So you're going to want to kill these in the Catacombs of Karend in the multi-combat environment using Barrage or Burst. This task can usually only take between 25 and maybe 40 minutes depending on your magic level and gear that you're using. Next up is going to be the Gargoyles and I suggest that you block this one permanently. Why? Because there is no environment that you can actually cannon these. They will take you quite a bit of time, even if you are high stats. Next up is going to be Trolls. You can cannon these in two places, Death Plateau or Jatizo, where the Ice Trolls are. If you're looking for a fast task, I suggest you go to Death Plateau because they are considerably weaker. Next task, Cave Kraken. The Cave Kraken can only be killed using magic style attacks. Now this is going to take you a very long time. They have no cannonable environment. So I suggest that you block these ones as well. Next task is Aviancies, and this is an unlock. Now they are located in a multi-combat zone, but you cannot set up a cannon in the God Wars dungeon. So if you're looking for lots of XP, I suggest that you leave this one locked. Next up is going to be Aberrant Spectres, which we will then head back to the Stronghold Slayer Cave in the Gnome Stronghold. These can be cannoned. Next up is going to be Black Dragons. Now, from my personal opinion, I suggest that you block these. Even though you can get somewhat of a lower number of them, they can be quite tedious to get to, and they can take a bit of time if you're of a lower combat level. If you're super high combat level, maybe 120 plus, you could probably get away with not blocking these, as they won't take you as long. In my personal opinion, though, I would still block these if I was going for maximum XP. Next up is going to be Spiritual Creatures, and I also suggest that you block these because they are pretty out of the way. It takes a little bit of time to get to them, and you don't get much XP per hour from killing them because you can't set up a cannon. Now the Spiritual Creatures was our fifth and final block it task. 
You can unlock a sixth block task slot, but you will be required to complete an elite diary. Now, if you do have the elite completed, I will leave it entirely up to you as to what you want to block for your sixth task. Uh, it's kind of like a bonus, but as for the other five that you can get specifically through quest points, uh, those are my five blocked permanently tasks. The next grouping of NPCs we are coming to is going to carry a task weight of 5. These NPCs have a 2.19% chance of being assigned as your Slayer task. First up is going to be the Skeletal Wyverns, and I'm going to suggest that you skip these. These are going to be skipped because they do have a high defense and high HP level. You cannot cannon them, and they will take you quite a while to finish a task. Next up is going to be Iron Dragons. Iron Dragons do not reward you with a lot of XP, even though you can find them in a multi-combat area in the Catacombs of Karen, so I suggest you skip these as well. Following the Iron Dragons, we have the Steel Dragons, which should also be skipped because they have a much higher defense level than the Iron Dragons, so they will obviously take you a lot longer to kill. Next up is going to be Cave Horrors. Now, I'll leave this one up to you. I say skip it because, personally, I don't like going there. You have to wear the Witch Haven icon and that's really not fun because it takes away from your, some of your stats, but you can cannon the Cave Horrors. So if it really means that much to you, you can do this one, but I suggest that you skip it. Next up is going to be Dark Beasts, and this is going to be another one that's going to be up to you. You can skip this task. You can extend this task, which will give you over 100 Dark Beasts, but if you don't have it extended, you will only get between 10 and 20, which if you're hurting for Slayer points, you can go do it, knock the task out semi-quickly, and get the easy Slayer points, but if you have a lot of Slayer points, I suggest skipping it and moving on to another task that can get you a lot more XP per hour. Next up is going to be Mithril Dragons, which are an unlock. These are terrible XP, so if you're looking for a lot of XP, just leave these locked. Following that is going to be the Red Dragons, which are also an unlock, and they do take quite a while to kill. So you're going to want to leave those locked as well. Next up is going to be the Anku. Anku can once again be killed in the Stronghold Slayer Cave in the Gnome Stronghold with a cannon, and they are only assigned in a number of 50 to 90 at a time. So this can be a very quick task for very quick Slayer points. The last task carrying a task weight of 5 is going to be Fossil Island Wyverns. And if you can be assigned these, I do suggest that you spend the points to permanently block these. You will not use up a block task spot as you are spending Slayer points to never be assigned them again. They can be tedious and they do have a high defense level. So if you have the Slayer points, I suggest that you block them permanently. If you don't have them all saved up, just go ahead and skip it. Next up is going to be the grouping of NPCs that carries a task weight of 4, and there are only 3 of these. Uh, task weight of 4 will be a 1.69% chance of being assigned as a Slayer task. First up is going to be Elves, and I suggest that you skip these. This might be a personal bias because I hate going all the way to Letya or wherever over there to kill Elves, but honestly I think you should skip them. They're not very good XP and they can be a pain to kill. Next up is Blue Dragons. Blue Dragons should most certainly be done because you can cannon the babies for a very quick task, or if you're looking to make a little bit of money, maybe on the hives while you're doing the task, you can cannon the fully grown Blue Dragons in the Taverly Dungeon. Last NPC for this grouping is going to be Scabarites, and these things are very, very annoying to kill. They have an incredibly high defense level, and you will need the little dagger, I think it's called the Karis, to kill them. So I suggest that you skip these all the time. Next grouping of NPCs is going to carry a task weight of 3, and you will have a 1.27% chance of being assigned these as a task. Now all three of these are going to be skipped. First off, the Kurosks. They are located in the Relica Slayer Cave in a single-way combat zone, and they will take you quite a while to finish a task off. Next up is going to be Brine Rats. Uh, you're going to want to skip those. Turoths, same as the Kuros, they are located in a single way combat zone in the Relica Slayer Cave, so you're also going to want to skip those. And finally, last, we have the tasks that carry a weight of only 2, which will give you a 0.85% chance of being assigned these as a task. Now, because they are so low, and because they do give such a small amount to kill, I am going to suggest that you do all three of these tasks. Zygomites, Adamant Dragons, and Rune Dragons. Zygomites can be killed in Xenaris, 
and they generally don't take that long maybe five to ten minutes just to knock out a task go get yourself a new one adamant dragons can only be assigned in an amount of three to seven and rune dragons three to six so you can if you only get three of those you can go knock those out very quickly and move on to your next task but that's it guys uh, we have went through every single task that neve or steve can assign you and i want to make it clear that this is purely opinion based these are my opinions on what you should skip, what you should do, and what you should block. Now, the reason that I say that is because a lot of people, they tend to disagree with which tasks you should block, skip, or do. And I just want to make it clear that this is exactly what I would do, and this is what I have found success doing. So if you like this video, please leave a thumbs up down below. They really help the video spread around. If you have not done so yet, please go ahead and tap that subscribe button on your way out. And if you're feeling super generous, check out my Patreon page. And if you want to become an ultimate Patreon, you will have the choice to pick between one of four designs of a Slayer Squad t-shirt that I will have made and sent out to you. Until next time, my friends, take it easy.